I put this picture of our first slide up here because I feel like that we are being asked right now to be Wonder Man and Wonder Woman. Um, and all of the things that we've talked about up to this point really, really kind of fit within that is that we're being asked a lot. Um, and yes, it's, it's exciting opportunities, but it's, it's definitely some challenges. So um, as, as Dr. Cooney just mentioned a second ago, I'd like everybody just right this second to just take a deep breath. Because I think the feeling is that many of you haven't really stopped to take a deep breath since this started. Um, and when I was putting together this presentation, I, I first thought about putting up a picture of a roller coaster ride because I thought maybe that was what this was felt what is feeling like. But a roller coaster ride, we can see the path in front of us. We we know the, the path of that. So I actually think it's more like a um, a tilt a whirl where the cars go in all these different directions and they go at different speeds and we're not quite sure like where it's going to go next. That's kind of what this feels like right now. Um, it's fast, it's unpredictable. And a lot of us have been kind of holding on tight since it started, but we can't really stay in that crisis mode for a long period of time without really wearing out. And so, yes, it's crazy fast, and yes, it's unpredictable, but what I'm hoping that we can talk about today is some ways to cope with this. So let's look at um, just the fact that this is a unique stressor and it has all of the factors that create extensive stress. And so we've got change, which many of us don't like change on a good sunny day, um, let alone change that's incredibly sudden, it's unpredictable, and it's continuous. I mean, um, you know, every single day, it seems like something's kind of altering either in our environment or the environment of, of people that, that we care about. Um, definitely a lack of control and it also that there's no end date that we don't know when we're going to be able to resume control. I mean, I, I find it interesting that a lot of communities are kind of doing two weeks at a time, you know, so they're doing these um, stay, at, stay at home or stay in place when we know we're getting a sense that it's not going to be two weeks, you know, but we don't have a sense of control of how long that's going to be. And there's also large potential negative stakes at, at play here. Um, and all of these things lead to what folks call moral fatigue, which is kind of this idea that we are now all of a sudden being tasked with constantly evaluating behaviors that used to just be second nature to us. And, and now we're evaluating them as far as, are they the right thing to do? So clients come in and it's like, well, or, or they want to come in. Is that the right thing to do? Or they call for an appointment. And it's like, well, is this an emergency? Can this wait? You know, um, and then in our personal life, do we, you know, do we want fresh produce and go grocery shopping every couple days? Or do we start spacing that out more? What can we touch? What can we not touch? You know, and, and there's all of these decisions that we're making on a daily basis. And that's exhausting. It's fatiguing. And lastly, this, this issue that we're faced with is multifactorial. It's impacting all areas of our life, um, both work and at home. So when we look at work, we're asked to, to make all kinds of changes in protocol and schedule and routines. Um, at home, many of our home lives have changed quite a bit. So maybe people are home a lot more. Um, Maybe shopping is a different experience now. I, I don't, I didn't used to worry that the things that I wanted to purchase were actually going to be at the store. Um, I didn't think about how many people were going to be at the store. I didn't think about shortened hours. Um, and then cleanliness level, you know, we're all doing kind of different levels of do things need to sit out in the garage for three days or, um, you know, some of those different factors, again, that are making things pretty complicated. With family, many of us are spending a lot more time with our family. That's great, and that can be stressful at the same time. A lot of us have kids that are all of a sudden at home now, um, and they can't go play with their friends. Um, their, their lives are upside down, which we know means our lives then are upside down. Um, 
And so there's childcare issues, especially for us that are still working and, and how to kind of navigate that. And then a lot of us have concerns about parents or older family members that, um, that maybe are, are close to us or maybe geographically farther away and, and concerns about what they're doing and if they're staying safe. And then finances. So a lot of us have all of a sudden some concerns about finances that we didn't have a month ago. Um, you know, do, is our job still okay? Is our partner's job still okay? Um, all of those things all together. And then specifically about work, and I know that, um, that Gina and Wendy talked about this in, in a way that it provides all these awesome opportunities for us to adapt and change. But I want to acknowledge that, that it, we're asking a lot out of people right now, that really everything is changing. So many people's schedules have changed where I know a lot of hospitals are doing like teams that are grouped together now. And so all of the routines that then like bleed over into home life are changing. Obviously, protocols are changing tremendously and then trying to adapt to that. A lot of hospitals are experiencing shortages, either with um, support staff or colleagues that are sick or in quarantine for one reason or another, um, short of supplies. And then I just want to mention the conflicted feelings that I'm hearing where even within some teams, some folks are wondering about how many services they should be providing, how many supplies they should be taking, how many they should be reallocating to human um, hospitals and, and um, human medical staff. And so there might be some differences of opinion within your team um, and the expectation that we're going to be accepting of that. We're going to adapt to those, those thoughts. Um, lots of changes as far as production and um, how much money people are making. And then all of the anxiousness that comes with, with this for the staff, and then certainly with the pet owners. And then you're dealing with all of this stuff while you're also dealing with all those other things that are going on in your life, you know, the home and the family and things like that. And that would be a ton. And so, um, but a lot of us then look for the coping strategies that we've used all of this time, and all of a sudden, many of them are not available to us. And so, Lots of times we'd go out on the weekend, we'd get together with friends, we'd you know, go out for dinner, go dancing. Um, we can't do any of those things now. And then some of us that are more introverted, you know, we got to spend time alone at home, which is a scarce commodity for many people that I talk to now. Um, a lot of people went to the gym to exercise or they played some type of team sports that now we can't do that. You know, so all of those things that, um, that perhaps many of us were using are not available now. So what do we do? Well, I'd like to start by saying, let's just take another deep breath and first pat yourself on the back because you are doing it. Maybe not perfectly, but you're definitely doing it. And I want you to think about that for a second because when else in your life have you been asked to change everything all at once? Because that's what we've been asked to do, change everything. And if there's no time frame for when things are going to go back to normal, and we're getting more and more clear that it's going to be a new normal, it's going to be different. And so with all that, though, you are doing it. You're continuing to go to work. You're continuing to provide an essential medical service. And part of that means that you're, you're risking your own health um, because you know how important this is. And you're dealing every day with anxious people, with stressed out people, um, oftentimes undersupplied and understocked. And I'd, I'd like to suggest that also at a time where the media is not doing a really great job of emphasizing what an important area, what an important essential service that veterinary medicine is providing. So we're hearing a lot and, and for good reason about human medicine um, but I'd like to see more in the media about this important service, too. So as we look at the new normal, how, how do we survive? And I'd say, how do we thrive? And so some of the things that I want to talk about specifically have to do with mental and behavioral changes. So what mental stuff can we do? What are some things that I want to focus on? One of them is I want us to just take a minute and grieve the loss. And 
And what I mean by that is that we all have experienced loss in several different areas up to this point. And some of them can be like big things. And some of them are things like we've lost the ability to schedule a haircut when we want it. I, I think, gosh, darn it. <laughs> I should have done that like a couple months ago. <laughs> or we've lost the ability to just go out to the store and pick up something that we forgot to get, you know, or to just go drop by a neighbor's, you know, so it doesn't have to be big things and it doesn't make us feel better to say, well, yeah, but this person experiences really huge loss and somehow that diminishes yours. No, these losses all are losses and it's okay to take a second and say, you know what, it really stinks. It stinks that, you know, I couldn't celebrate my birthday the way that I wanted or that trip that I had planned for a really long time or looked forward to got canceled. Yeah, those are all significant losses and it's okay to feel sad. Also, I want you to acknowledge that you have dealt successfully with challenges and uncertainty before. You have gone through tough times and that you're definitely gonna get through this tough time. So, but the way that you do that is that I want you to think consciously about making a shift from being in sprint mode to marathon mode. So a lot of you guys are kind of still in this sprint mode and we know that that's unsustainable when you're running a marathon, that you're gonna to have to pace yourself, that you're gonna to have to change how fast you're going. So other monitoring of emotions that I, I'd like for you to do is to look at your anxiety level. And one of the things that I find helpful is to just ask yourself, what's a helpful level of concern? And what I mean by that is that when you're looking at different behaviors that you're thinking about implementing, what's a helpful level of concern? You know, so we all are kind of following on that continuum of super vigilant, slightly obsessive, to, you know, slight denial of not changing very much at all. We're all somewhere in that. And then what works best for you and recognizing that there's really no perfect answer right now. And so what's going to help you feel the safest? What's going to help reduce your anxiety and, and making conscious decisions about what you want to do at this point. Another emotion that I want you to think about or monitor is your guilt or feelings of guilt, which I think many of us are prone towards anyway. You know, that feeling of that we're not doing enough. Um, Check that out and make sure that that's not leading to behaviors that are not marathon mode like. And so are you feeling like you should be doing more and more? Um, are you feeling guilty because perhaps you were quarantined or perhaps because, you know, there's shortages at, at work and so you feel like you need to work more? Um, or perhaps guilt that you fear that perhaps you're making others sick by choices that you're making to continue working. Um, there are no easy answers here. And, and really going back to that place of that you really are doing the very best that you can. And then focusing on what is within your control. And, and I know that we talked about this a little bit earlier, but I kind of picture that circle of control, which actually is pretty small at this point. That's where though you wanna focus your energy and not on all of the things that are outside of our control that just kind of drain our energy. So that's where we want to focus. Um, we, so those were some emotional or mental changes. And the behavioral changes that I'd like to suggest is that if you are checking the news or social media stuff several times a day, I'd like you to stop that. Um, it doesn't tend to make people feel better. And so be firm with yourself. Set up a limit. Say once or twice a day, you know, and that's it. Um, and so that's one way to kind of help decrease some of that anxiety I'm seeing in folks. And then be creative as far as developing new coping strategies. And so maybe are there some types of exercise or workout that you can do at home? Or can you carve out like little personal alone times at home, you know, kind of um, negotiate at home with the other folks that are there? Can you create new routines? Um, and perhaps really force yourself to focus on the positive. One of the things that's been found to be really beneficial is just writing down two or three things that you're grateful for every day and just put them on a sticky note. And so put them up on you know, a counter somewhere or on a cabinet so that you can look at them. 
And then looking at your self-care and saying, can I make this a priority? If it hasn't been up to this point, it needs to be now. How do you start setting appropriate boundaries and limits? Because as we've kind of talked about, that the new normal is going to be different. And so how do you come into this in a better, healthier place? And then part of that, too, is that social support network. So we're physically isolating. You definitely don't want to social isolate, which means we're going to have to be creative. You know, so do you have happy hour, you know, um, over the Internet? You know, do you do you play different games? Do you reach out to people more? Um, do you FaceTime more? But it's super important that we actually heighten that, that we look for ways to have additional connection because some of the older ways that were super easy, we can't access now. And then evaluating your behavior at work. Um, what are some things that perhaps that you might want to change? And one of the things I'd like to suggest is that you acknowledge often and verbally the incredible changes in stress that's happening with all of this with, to your staff, to clients. It's kind of this huge elephant in the room right now where sometimes you feel like, well, gosh, everybody knows. Well, it still helps to validate it and say, yeah, this change in protocol is really hard. It is really hard for me to, because you can't come in. It is really hard that I can't give you a hug right now. You know, so verbalizing some of those things. And then what has needed fixing for a while at work, but you just haven't made it a top priority or haven't taken the time? And so, some, have you done some of these things or wanted to do some of these things to make a more cohesive team, for example? But it always kind of got pushed off to the back burner. Um, this might be the time to say, this is a really good time. You know, I want to implement some of these things to make a stronger team, to make people feel more valued and recognized. And then pausing for just a second to say, what are you role modeling for others? Um, and what, what do you want to role model? So are you role modeling um, appropriate boundaries and ways to limit and ways to say no and ways to take care of yourself? Are you role modeling where you don't expect perfection from yourself? And so then you're also not expecting that of other people. And then are your stated priorities are they matching what your current life looks like, you know, and, and kind of making those a little bit more balanced if you can. And so this could be a time where you work to change that relationship with yourself. You know, what does that self-talk look like and what do your expectations look like? And can we make those a little bit nicer, a little bit more forgiving? Um, can we look at how we deal with change and perhaps be open to the idea of, can we redefine it? Can we redefine anxiety as excitement? You know, can we learn to lean into the unknown a little bit more and rest in the confidence that you are going to survive this, that you've survived really challenging times in the past? And emerge from all of this being stronger and more self-confident and more accepting of, of yourself and then more accepting of others. And so in, in summary, you know, I just, again, want us to just take a pause and say, great job. You've been doing a really, really great job. And that we're all going to make it through this. And that you've got some really neat opportunities to step back, reflect, and come out stronger in the end. So thank you.